As he said this, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. In Hebrew, if one wants to emphasize a word, one repeats it, either in the same form or in a different form. For instance, the infinitive absolute. We find it coming through in several passages of the Gospel. The Last Supper, the Lord says, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you. So the Lord is making a point here. And the point is linked with hearing, actually. We have different categories of hearers, of listeners. And interestingly enough, Simon and Garfunkel have made a distinction in that great song, The Sound of Silence, between hearing and listening. We sometimes hear and don't hear because we're not listening. We're not hearing what is being said secretly. For a word has potentiality and several layers of power. And the Lord is indicating that this potentiality may be frustrated according to the terrain. I have in the hermitage what we had at home and what most French families would still have the great La Rousse. It's an encyclopedia which contains everything that one needs to know. La Rousse. And on the front cover always one has this picture of seeds being sown by a person sowing seeds in a field. And the caption is, Je sais ma tuvo, I sow to all winds. Well, the words are in the air they're also on the sacred page. And from the page also they might go through the microphone. That can have an effect on people. I remember in France precisely when I was 17 hearing a sermon on La Trappe. It was very moving and it had a concrete effect. Sermons can change lives. And they should do. Many saints over the centuries have been moved by what they heard in church. St. Francis, St. Anthony of the Desert. If you will be perfect, go and sell all that you have, give to the poor, and come and follow me. And I remember in school days being hugely influenced by what I heard both by our religious teacher and by my Sunday school teacher and by things heard in sermons. In the Protestant culture, the word is central, for they have little else, and it is well used. Do we realise the potentiality that we have when we are actually in church proclaiming the interpretation of the application of the gospel just heard. We can say things they already know, or we can say something that they don't know, and maybe don't want to hear. One is easy, the other not so. But which will have an effect, perhaps. Now, when we preach, we can perhaps have just the microphone ought to know how to use it, otherwise the word will not be heard. That applies also to readers. But the microphone also may lead to another microphone, which will record it, diffuse it. And there we see precisely the power of the word, sown up to every wind, going through the airwaves, landing in an unknown ear, maybe on the other side of the planet. A word can change somebody on the other side of the planet. A word. The printed word too, which was the only means that we had for centuries, has that power. 
But now in a culture where there are other forms of words as well. And this is the first generation that has had to handle this seriously. All that is in the air virtually. And this is something which we need to look at because it might be a new form of what is throttling the word. A warning given by the Lord in this very Gospel. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. Now those cares can actually be intellectual cares, because every time one takes in someone else's words, there is a care, an, an amount of mental energy going into sorting out that new problem or new equation. That new set of words is going to drain us to some extent. Multiply that by a continuous bombardment of words, virtual or otherwise, and one can see how very quickly one can be throttled and the power of the word may be dulled. The power of the word quite often is in inverse proportion to its number. The Lord proclaimed words which are still heard and not drowned in other words. When one proclaims the gospel in church or any reading, one needs to let the echo settle. There is actually familiar echo in church buildings, a proclamation which is solemn and not hurried. Let the people absorb every ounce of the word in all its potentiality. Never rush. Let a comma be a comma. Not be afraid of pauses, for the silence is the echo needed by the word to have its cushion and its lasting sound. One word is completely swallowed up in one that follows it too quickly and life is like that right now on a daily basis. Our words are being swallowed up by others. There are some who all day have background words pumped at them by then, they are no longer able to hear the power of each one. Lexio Divina in the monastic life is a discipline which presupposes a great stillness, physical and mental. It is a mode in which the word is heard maximally. One goes on one's knees, one invokes the Holy Ghost opens the sacred page and one asks, one asks the Spirit to breathe as he breathed on the waters, as he breathed on creation, as he breathes also the epiclesis of the Mass when the priest spreads his hands over the holy gifts, hovering over the waters, vivifying them. This is the power of the word, for in one word is encapsulated that life which is the seed of eternal life. Let us ask for the gift, not to be swamped in words, to know how to limit them, not being always available and accessible, and not being addicted to words, words, more words, flying through the air. Il Signore chiede l'ascolto e mette in guardia contro quello che soffoca la parola. Parla dei problemi della vita, i desideri, la ricchezza, ma nel nostro tempo c'è un altro problema, quello del fatto che ci sono troppe parole in giro, soprattutto adesso nell'aria stessa. 
l'aria è piena di parole virtuali e la regola di base è questo la forza della parola è in proporzione inversa del suo numero e frequenza l'exio divino presume una grande pace interna e esterna di maniera che la minima parola che esce dalla sacra pagina abbia tutto il suo effetto e che la potenzialità della parola è al massimo. Thank you. 